latest USDA estimates project Nebraska farmers will grow more than 1.6 billion bushels of corn on an average yield of 184 bushels per acre. That yield forecast is three bushels per acre lower than last month's expectation, but five bushels per acre above 2014. In our previous episode of Market Journal, we looked at how growers could estimate their own soybean yields, and this week, Nebraska Extension Cropping Systems educator Nathan Mueller demonstrates how to do the same in corn. It's that time of year where we want to get those pre-season, pre-harvest yield estimates in, and it really helps with thinking about, do you have enough storage on farm uh, for your corn? Are you going to need to look at storing elsewhere? And it gives you an idea of what yield you might expect for marketing purposes. So yeah, first thing you do, get in, walk past end rows, walk another at least 60 foot into the field. So you're getting to a place where your, your corn planter is operating under normal conditions. And then you measure out what, so you have a representative sample. Yep, for a representative sample in corn, we're going to work with just for multiplication ease and ease of everything, one one thousandths of an acre. So in 30 inch row corn, uh, that's 17 foot five inches. And that's typically what we see for row spacing here in Dodge County. Uh, and so in that 17 foot five inches, uh, we'll tape that off with the tape measure, lay it down. And then every fifth ear in dry land, I'll go and pull the husk back on every fifth ear. And so that makes it random, right? So you're not pick, cherry picking one ear over the other. The, the ears themselves are going to tell you what the average are. That's in dry land, you said. What about in irrigated? Yep, that's in dry land. Irrigated, just so you're using that whole 17 foot 5 inches and getting an average, I'm going to do every sixth ear in irrigated. And then when you're doing one row, we know that the row unit may not be running as efficiency uh, as well in each row. So I'm going to do two yield estimates side by side to get an average, hopefully across two row units and to get a better idea of what that spot average is. In those two rows, then you're peeling back every fifth ear or Correct. every sixth ear and irrigated and Correct. doing what to the ear? Yep, so every, every fifth ear, so a total of 10 ears in those two rows, I'm gonna count how many rows there are around, so 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, whatever it is, I write that down, and then I'm gonna count how many kernels are in each row. You don't count the kernels on the very bottom of the ear, and you don't count all the kernels at the very end. What you're looking for is the amount of kernels there are that have a continuous series of, of rows or kernels. So it's gonna be a little less kernels than the kernels that are actually on that ear. How do you use that information then? Yep, so what we really wanna know is how what's the average kernels there are on an ear out of all those ears out there. So to get the average number of kernels on an ear, you're gonna take the number of rows around by how many kernels there are in each row to get an, an, an ear, total kernels on this ear. And that could be anywhere from 300 to 600. Um, and that's what we want to do is get the average number of kernels on those five ears that we're looking at in a yield estimate. You average those five ears in one side and the average on the other five, and you're going to take kernels per ear, the average, times the number of ears that you have in that 17 feet, five inches. You multiply that number, and then you're going to divide by a kernel fudge factor, a kernel weight factor. With this year, with the good conditions, I'm going to use 75,000 or a number of 75 to divide that by. Under normal years, maybe 85 for dry land, 75 for irrigated for a conversion factor. But in a drought year like 2012, it, you know, you're going to use 95. So I guess that's part of this estimate that we don't know yet is what the kernel weights are going to be. Simple enough to break an ear in half and say this looks bigger yep. than... Yeah, and I did that during the, the crop tour here in Dodge County. Uh, snapped the ears in half and there was on some sandy ground. It was very clear that the shit kernels weren't very deep weren't very big, so you can get an idea, a rough idea of what you're looking at. What was the total yield that you found today? Yeah, the total yield in the field here was 189 bushels. In one row, we had 25 ears, and the other one we had 26. So we had a little bit bigger ears in one row, so the difference was over 200 and, and under uh, quite a bit less, so, so an average of 189. And that's the advantage to taking an average of two rows. And ideally, do you want to do this in more than one spot in the field? Yep, uh, just like we do with soybeans, uh, you're going to want to get an average of several spots in the field and try to get representative spots is a little harder to tell what that is in corn because in a, in a soybean field you can look over the field and know what that is in a corn field you're walking into what you're walking in uh, so it, it's important if you have yield history in fields try to get in representative spots and walk out there and pick those spots a little quicker than doing that in soybeans though yeah the nice thing about when corn you, you have your numbers when you walk out of the field you're not having to bring the, the bean plants out in the field with you it is a little bit quicker uh, to get a yield estimate corn and we, are, we don't have any adjustment factors um, for harvest loss, moisture loss, I found you don't need those to get the yield estimate we get as it is gets us pretty close to what we see at harvest. With soybeans, that's not necessarily the case.